Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. It's review time. And as you saw in the first part of this week's episode, Ben is, we're a man down right now. So it's just Brendan and I. Hopefully you didn't hate us so much um, from Tuesday's episode that you decided to skip this week. Um, but if you did, don't, hopefully don't Ben apologize. will be back next week. Don't apologize. I just, you know, I feel bad for the people. Ben, we, we've said this many times. We said on the main show, Ben is the, Ben's the main wheel. Like he's the lead wheel. He's the heart and soul of, of this bike. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's he's the he's the wheel that makes the thing go right. Like and you and that I are the broken. you and I are the 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 back wheels on the slingshot. Um, but he is the main wheel that this that steers us. That just couldn't go anywhere without him. You know, could lose one of us, and then like, the car will still go. The slingshot will still go, but you lose him, and it, I don't know. We're here, but uh, anyway. Um, Hey, we are reviewing something for you tonight, and then we're going to taste it up against something else. We both have a bottle of it. Uh, me, more reluctantly than Brendan. But no, FAE, Maker's Marks Wood Finishing Series 2021 bottle. It's 110 proof, 110.3 proof. Uh, regular Maker's Mark uh, mash bill that we always have from them, which is... I oh, I got it. I got it go. here. It is 70% corn, 16% wheat. Maker's Mark is a weeder. 14% malted barley, no rye in there at all. Goodbye, rye. <laughs> so stave details, 10 virgin toasted American oak staves. So very woody, very uh, oaky, I think we'll get into. Um, any thoughts on this before we jump right into it? So uh, astute listeners and viewers would remember that the FAE 01, and there will be a FAE 02 this year as well. This is from their 2021 limited release series. Maker's Mark has been doing a limited release series, TJ, since 2019, I believe. Uh, and that first year to come out was an absolute banger. Everyone loved it. Then 2020 last year fell off a little bit. This one's a little more polarizing. I think some people really like it, such as myself, others such as you, and eh, not so much. Uh, on the bottle here, one of the big tasting notes is this is a fruit forward expression with notes of tobacco and wood. Uh, I, I know when we had Elliot on a few weeks ago, uh, his big complaint with this bourbon that he likes, other than it tastes like Copenhagen chew, uh, because there's so much tobacco heaviness. Now, if you like that in a bourbon, if you like it to be a little rough and, and rugged, this might be for you. If you're more of a sweet whore, like my sweet whore right here, um, maybe not. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> maybe not. So, uh, so yeah, that's the deal with, with the FAE 01 here. It's going to be a little intense. Like you said, TJ, it has the 10 uh, American Oak staves. Uh, and as we'll talk about and compare it to some of the store picks, Maker's Mark does this really cool finishing series with store picks and their annual release where you have like five different options. Of, of different types of finishes of, of wood and staves to put into uh, the cask. So you have like baked American puree, seared French cuvee. I don't think I said that right. Maker's Mark 46, which is its own of uh, French uh, Mennonite or mocha, roasted French, and then toasted French spice, which is all this is in here. So there's no deviation. There's no mix and matching. They just said, here's 10 uh, French spice uh, staves. You're going to like it. Um, Man, immediately... On the nose, it's a lot of wood. It's mm -hmm. very oaky. Um, some vanilla. I mean, mm -hmm. like it's not all oak. Um, not getting that typical maker's like um, syrupy pancake uh, mm -hmm. that we would typically get. It's man, the oak is powerful. Uh, yeah, really, really strong. It's an oak bomb for for those that uh, that would like such a thing. Does it? Uh, Okay, here's a here's here's a good question. Comparison, maybe. Um, I thought uh, Pappy Van Winkle 15 year mm -hmm. was kind of an oak bomb. I don't have any of that right now to kind of be nosing right now. I do, um, but I'm not pouring it out. For, yeah, for this for this um, specific episode. <laughs> but if if you thought that was an oak bomb, this is an oak bomb. I, I wouldn't yeah. compare the two by any means. But if you are looking for a replacement nose on Pappy Makers uh, FAE01, since we, for our, from our replacement series like we did. I this don't is find basically this to be, a Pappy 15. I don't find this to be unpleasant. It is intense. It is oak forward. I do get TJ uh, when we talk about like oak notes uh, to me, usually like oakiness and vanilla are kind of synonymous to an extent. If you're getting oak, you're also going to get some undertones of vanilla. And that's because the, the vanillins and the wood come out uh, through the, through the toasting process. So th that makes sense. I'm also getting a ton of cherry on this. It is very fruit forward, but like dark cherry, and it's not sweet though. And I think that's maybe where it's like, it's like a bitterness 
with it as well and like a dark chocolate too so it's it it's got like a t tinge of sweet to it but that spice and and oaky forwardness uh really kind of like dominates the nose to me i like the nose it's just it's different it's unique for sure less sweet very oaky but like i said not unpleasant by any means i don't i don't love this bottle I've, obviously i've had you know a good amount as you can see Oh yeah, you 40 have forty percent gone. For someone there. who complains about it, yeah. Well, you know, every time I get to the third drink of the night, I pour this to like help, <laughs> help like kill it off a little bit. So this, I don't pour it your, for the rest of the night, but it's my third drink every time. It's your four effect. Uh, is what they call it, your four effect bourbon. And what's the effect yeah. we're going for? Just killing the bottle. <laughs> I mean, I, I think at a hundred and ten point three proof, it's uh, intoxication is is what you're oh, going for. Oh, that to, effect. To, that to effect. Extent. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's usually because my palate's like already like. Ah, Ah, you've already killed us. Like, what's another little bit? So, um, but not unpleasant. I don't don't dislike the nose here at all. Taste wise, um, uh, still a ton of that woody, oaky uh, taste. I get a little bit of the rye coming through. I get a little bit of the peanut shell. Am really? I crazy with that? I mean, well, there is no rye spice on on there, but I mean, you're allowed to get peanut, and and that's how sometimes my brain interprets rye. So you're allowed to get that. Um, I am getting. Maybe darker. that's weird with that. Maybe I'm I don't getting... know the difference between a rye and a wheat, like Ben. Um, oh, rest don't, in make, peace. don't make fun of Ben. Yeah, he's dead. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that if he really does <laughs> if die. If he really does die, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll edit that. Uh, all right, Pete. If you heard that joke, Ben's still alive. So good news. <laughs> Jesus. Um, all right. So you said peanut butter. Now it's in my mind. I know. Before, sorry. Really no, it's good. okay. Because so before I was getting like a toasted marshmallow. And so now my brain with the. Think about like a chart. Think about, do you ever have a fluffer nutter? You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Oh God. Now I'm going to start to like this because you called it toasted. Oh, man. No, that, no, 10 out of 10. Next bottle. <laughs> it's made a toasted oak stave. Um, you should like it. It's just done in a different way. So fluffer nutter for people like not familiar with four. a childhood, <laughs> a childhood yeah. favorite is a peanut butter sandwich with marshmallow fluff on it. It is delicious. And the wheat from the maker's mark is giving it kind of a little bit of a bready note there. Uh, now that TJ said peanut butter, my brain can't not think of peanut butter. I already had the toasted marshmallow beforehand, uh, but that's all secondary, TJ, to me, to the the oak, the tobacco note, like it is like tobacco leaf, like for sure, and like leather as well, uh, with a little bit of like red apple Christmas, like kind of sprinkled in there too. That This is complex. Are you going to sit here and tell me this isn't complex, right? This is definitely complex. No, no, I'll agree with that. Yeah, no, no issues saying that it's complex at all. Um I'm getting some of the toast, but again, still, I, I get a ton of the, um, I get a ton of the wood. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's toasty wood to me. Like it's I, I joked about a toasty two by four, but it, it's just kind of a toasty, uh, I, I don't mean to call it so bad. It, the, the, the taste is not super unpleasant by any means. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it is just, it's strong, it's powerful, and if you're not a fan of the tobacco or the wood, oh, fluffer nutter! Yeah, I just wanted to distract yes, you a little bit. For those that. listening, sorry that you didn't get to see that, but I put up a picture of a fluffer nutter. Have you ever had a fluffer nutter? Like, you know, yeah, like, of course. Oh, like, all right, some people like this. Still bananas in it, too. I like the you extra can. added sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. just... Um, there's, oh, there's a poor little Jack Daniels in this, and it'll be... Oh, oh you get the banana, banana or old oh, poster. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. All right, so last night blending project some, CPA Seminole is gonna love us. This is a blending project, so right? So I here. started doing his uh wood 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 mark rare, which is wood for double oaked uh maker's mark cast strength and eagle rare. So I got that blending, but I did my own blending last night, TJ. It was this FAEO one, three quarters of that, one quarter of the decadence. Uh so I figured like this has a little bit of bitterness and strong like elements to it. The decadence was super maple syrupy sweetness. Combine the two, dude, it was really good. And then I got really crazy. I'm blending 1915. So when I had like maybe a third of this left, I poured in a little bit more 1915. I got crazy. It was milk mm. chocolate. It was like banana foster, toasted bananas foster. It was really good. I'm going to see if I can recreate that some other time. Maybe share it with you guys. All right. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Have you, did I send you any 1915? Have you made it yourself? Oh, you I, made it yourself. I or? have, I have the 19. You know, I just have like a couple like sample bottles of it just kind of marinating just to kind of see what I think of it uh, going on right now. And we'll, we'll see. Maybe it'll become its own bottle pretty soon. Join I the like club, it. Be one of the cool kids like you. We'll see. I, 
I like it. Oh, mine's gone. My, when Ben came over that night, he was like, more, more, more. Like as much as he crapped on 1910, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think he was, um, he, he loved it. So, um, yeah, Flufford. Okay. Back on subject. How does it finish? <laughs> Wait a bit. We don't have Ben here to keep us on track. It's um, interesting. It's super spicy to me on the initial part of it. Right, and that's there's spicy. that rye. It's, there's no, it's just not true. RIP Ben. Um, and it kind of like, it fizzles out to me. Um, it just has a strong kick initially. And then the finish kind of goes away, like within three seconds. I get a nice little burning, like lingering, but maybe it's because we're doing this like at 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> after the, oh, should I not say that? No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. I didn't know if you were going to get in trouble for work. My work hours are flexible. I worked all last two days over the weekend. Um, no, I'm going to be working late tonight, so it's not a big deal. All right. So we're good. Um, but so no, the finishing man, like it's just, I don't know. Is it falling flat for you? It is, I don't want to uh, sway your opinion there. It's just it, it, to me, it's the least impressive part of the drink, which is surprising given that it's it's 110 proof. It's just not not doing it for me the way I thought it would compared to the rest of the drink. You know, I think sometimes we rate finishes a little too roughly. Um, we, we don't give them their due credit. Um, it, you know, we seem to be rather low on finishes. We haven't given something a one on a finish. Since the smoke wagon small batch, you gave that a one. We did give decadence. Somebody gave decadence a one. But outside of that, we typically just give finishes a 0.5. Like I gave the toasted barrel finish a one. Um, we we are very hard on finishes. We gave red breast cast strength a one. You gave Russell's reserve tenure a one. We're, we're that pretty was, hard. That was on, before we were doing uh, some, quarter points. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're pretty hard on finishes. And so I still think this finish is bad as you. I think it stays consistent. I think it stays okay. consistent with the taste. I don't think it it falls flat, falls flat, not, I don't know, but I, I think it just kind of stays consistent. It, I don't know exactly what we're looking for in a finish, but like all of our finishes end up being like 0.5 or 0.75 or less. Like yeah. we never give anything. It's like, there's no good, just something to consider. I just kind of like was well, thinking. We don't on give that. it a whole lot of perfect nose. We don't give it a lot of perfect taste. True. You're right. Like the finish, like it is kind of a, to, to nail a finish and be distinctly different because usually just like kind of alcohol burn with like two or three notes so to be really different is rare i guess and i, I don't dislike the finish you know as i'm thinking about it man what i'm getting is like it's that to- i bet you anything what i'm getting is that super hyped up uh toasted oak staves because also all this is like spicy toastiness at the end like it's almost like a smoky like undercurrent finish it's just like it, it, the alcohol doesn't exist in the finish it's more like the the spice that's coming from the end of it. And it's like one noted to me, which isn't unpleasant. It just kind of is. Is what it is at that point. Yeah. All right. So let's rate it. It's just you and I. Ben, we should do, Oh, he, he he's not going to listen back. He might, but he might, he's, if he's not feeling well and, and desperate and hard up and well, but this will be coming out next, like in, in like 10 or 11 days, we should have yeah, him, man, we should have him review this blind. So that he doesn't have the his biases against it. Just have him review it blind. Don't tell him what it is. Uh, tell him what it is when he gets to value. And then we'll add his score in. That's a good okay. way to do it without Let's the biases it. already in it. Yeah. Hopefully we he doesn't. Lie, we won't lie to him like the one time with the Eagle Rare. That was Yo, YOLO. Which may, again, if you hear that joke, it's because he's alive. So, yes. uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, you can start. We'll snake the whole way back and forth. Right. Uh, nose for you. Two points uh, on the nose. It's a good nose. I like it. Uh, stop short of being special to me, but it is very pleasant. Oh, man, I'm between 1.25 and 1.5. I think the nose is the best part of it. I'm going to go high on it 1.5 for me on the nose. I'm exactly the same. 1.5. I it. think that it's unique. Mm-hmm. Um, though I do think it's a wood bomb, it's it's unique and not unpleasant by any means. And that's really what you need to, to score nose points with me is just don't be unpleasant. Don't mm-hmm. be nasty. Um, if you if you have like some nasty either, bourbon. Yeah, if you have some floral notes or you have some caramel notes, like I'm open to all kinds of different noses because I'm not putting it in my mouth just yet. That's what she said. But nose is really easy to get a high score with me on. And a lot of bourbons do. So mm-hmm. taste this is where it gets a little tougher. I need one more sip to. All right, uh, well, let's. I'll stall by just kind of muttering and stammering here. This is good. Don't want any dead that's, air. That's all I do on the regular show, anyway. So, yeah, same um, yeah taste is so different to me. I'll give it uh, a two point two five, okay. which I I don't know that I'm grading this on like an average to above average scale, I, but I will say it's unique. Um, it's not. 
Um, it's not my preference. And so that's why I can't give it much more than that, mm -hmm. but it's not bad by any means. Um, it's just not necessarily something that I would go for. Um, but it is very unique. It's, uh, it's got a good bite to it um, mm -hmm. as far as an alcohol. And so, yeah, 2.25 for me. You? Uh, I'm, I'm close. I went 2.5. And for similar reasons, it's not my cup of tea or my cup of bourbon, a glass of bourbon in this case, I guess. Uh, but it is high quality. Like you can tell there is quality to it. There's really good craftsmanship to it. It is a very good bourbon. It's super unique, like you said, TJ. So I think that is a valuable uh, it just it is so tobacco and and leathery and and those are such the dominant characteristics. The other stuff does sprinkle through, um, but it's like ninety percent that, ten percent other stuff. So so to me, uh, it just it yeah it, it sticks at two point five because it, it's above average, but it's just it's not a great tasting bourbon. So I can't give it any more than that. Last week we gave Weller Special Reserve a zero across the board um, for finish. <laughs> Uh, you get you get one point to play with here. Um, wh what do you like on this finish here for uh, uh, Makers FAE one I guess I'll go with point five. I was between point two five point five. It was a fine finish. Uh, did it did something unique? I guess with it with the toastiness at the end. It just it, there was so much going on with the nose and the the palate and mid palate that like the the finish kind of falling off a little more than I thought was was disappointing. I was expecting it to be like a big bang finish, but it didn't quite get there for me. So point five. What about you? Um, Sheldon was expecting it to be a big bang finish as well. That's um, just, <laughs> gosh. just awful. Penny. Um, now I'll go point five as well. Uh, I doubled down on the joke that was terrible the first time. Yeah, uh, I'll go point five as well. Again, it stayed, uh, as I said on the review, it stayed consistent for me um, with the taste. The taste was slightly I rated it a 2.25, so just above average finish. wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was it was kind of right down the middle, which to steal a bin line. Uh, so 0.5 as well. Cohesiveness and complexity. I, I think this is where it's going to make up some points. I give it the full one. It, it okay. checks both boxes. It is both um, cohesive in the fact that I think you get a lot of those oak notes. I thought the finish and the taste were cohesive and complemented each other, neither being like overwhelmingly great or overwhelmingly bad by any means, but there was – cohesive there. And then I think you got some of its complexity. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm really so um, substituting complexity for d diversity or just how different it is, just something kind of unique. And so I'll give it the full point here. It makes up some points just f for what it is. I'm with you. It's definitely complex. Like there's a lot going on uh, for, and usually when people think of, of maker's market, they're kind of thinking something pretty down home plate and, and cherry and vanilla forward without a whole lot of, of nuance. It just shows like with, one proofing it up a little bit like this is the same mash bill as, as maker's mark so uh and there's no age statement but it's just it's proofed up to, to 110 and change and it's got the wood staves which just shows you how drastically that can change something right so uh, it is complex like you got the the woody notes on the nose and the vanilla and that's kind of dominant uh, but then it takes you to this really cool place with with the tobacco uh the the leather but you got peanut butter on it man i'm getting marshmallow there's some bready characteristics some some dark like red fruits a little bit of cherry uh, there oh fluffer fluffer nutter again fluffer nutter alert uh and and a little bit of apple too so there's a, like a good amount going on in this it's the complexity i i don't know if i can say it's super cohesive um it is to an extent toasty oak goes all the way through from nose to taste to finish uh, i don't know if i want to give it a full I'm gonna give it 0. 0.75 just because I don't know if I can quite say that it that it's 100% uh, cohesive. But then again, if it it's almost like that complex. You know, I'm gonna give it a full one. I'm gonna give it a full one because it is so very complex uh, that yeah. I think it almost compensates for it not being cohesive all the way through. Because sometimes you can't have one without the other if it is so extreme to one side or the other. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I agree. I think it's. But yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like it didn't. I don't know that it fully checked both boxes, but one box was so much more checked than mm -hmm. the other that I. I really, really liked that aspect of it. Um, it's not my cup of bourbon, like you just said. I, I love that. Um, but that would be the title of this episode if we didn't just do re you know review. But it, it's special for what it is. And I think that's going to lead us into our next our next 
you know, uh, category where we give two points for the value. So going into value, Brendan has this a 5.5 out of eight. I have it a 5.25 out of eight, Perfect. very similar scores. We got there different ways, but, uh, actually we got there the same way. We had the same score for everything and Brendan had a little bit more taste, but, uh, <laughs> not to lie to the people, but 5.5 and 5.25 out of eight. I mean, that's a very above average score that we're mm -hmm. going to end up giving this. We said the taste, which to, you know, is the most important kind of lacked, but everything else is really pretty good, you know, finished pretty average, but everything else was really good from mm -hmm. nose to cohesiveness. So value, I'll, I'll say a lot to say a little, um, man, I, I think that, you know, for a, a $70 bottle mm -hmm. that is not impossible to get by any means, but kind of hard to get, um, not hard to get, it'll be gone by next year. And that's what will make it hard to get. But right now you can go to your local so, I mean, my local total wine still has this. I still see it on shelves there. This is not impossible to get. It's not, I wouldn't call it allocated by any means. I mean, I guess there is a certain amount that was produced and will not be produced again. It is a limited release, but not hard to get by any means. Not It's easier to get than that toasted barrel Craig that we did. It's easier to get than the light whiskey that was a store pick. So I don't know. It's so unique. It's a good price and a good proof, uh, 70 bucks for uh, 110 I, I think it does pretty well here. I'm going to give it a 1.25 out of value. I, I would okay. say it's a, an above average value. Um, I almost give it 1.5, but you're going to stick with my uh, 1.25 and say that it's an above average value. It's unique. You should try mm -hmm. it. You should share it with friends, even if it's not your cup of tobacco. Ah. Tobacco cup of bourbon. I read tobacco off of it. Oh, did you? Oh, you weren't joking. So I was thinking like someone like a like a nah, dip stuff. That sounds yeah, disgusting. Just, just, uh, if it's not your cup of bourbon, you should still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would I would recommend you to try it. How much money way. would it take for you to drink a cup of dip? Like someone else's chew, like just dude. I them. I'm not like balling on a budget, you know, just yet. Like I'm not on your level, but I I I do okay, you know, in my life. So like the the uh, in college probably not very much, but like now I I do fairly well. So like you don't have to drink the whole thing. Like just like sip it and finish it. Keep it down. Like a thousand dollars. If I was like a thousand dollars, would you do that? If you if you and I had been out drinking one oh, night and would, you sure. know and you had the thousand dollars cash in front of me, like. I probably would do it. I think that's because, true. like, at that. But if you just said, like, "Hey, go find," you know, we're at a game at Doke, and you're like, "Hey, you see that guy over there? Like, go drink his tobacco." So I'm, be, I'm like, "No, dude, so you no. got to be intoxicated like, to do." Yeah, that. Gotcha. but like, yeah, I just, you know, but like a hundred dollars now, like, you know, I blow a hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do it. I, I think 500 is where it, like I have to start where the wheels mm, start. You start like internalizing. Like, you're like, yes. oh, so new Xbox. Like, yeah, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You start thinking what that 500 gets you. But what's a hundred dollars um, do today? Like, my wife just asked me earlier today. She was like, "Hey, do you mind if I spend 150 dollars on clothes for Elena for school?" And I was like, "Yeah, just go ahead. Like, who cares?" She's like, is, "Do you want me to put the?" I was like, "Yeah, debit card it. Like, who cares? Like, I don't." You know, so yeah, hundred bucks. I'm not drinking somebody else's spit. Must be nice. Um, all right. So <laughs> Can't one, hide one point two five for you. I'm going. I agree with everything you said. I think for me, it's just a little. I'm going to say one on value. Uh, and somebody like I'm not going to go. I've seen it at stores other times, TJ, and and I I like this bourbon a lot. I'm happy I have it. I have no buyer's remorse. I thought seventy dollars was fair for it. I'm not going to buy it again. Uh, it is super unique. I'm glad I have it. So to me, in that in that sense, it's a very average like price. It's a limited edition. Uh, it it's good, good quality, unique. It's what it should be. Seventy dollars, like that's that's what a bourbon like this should be. You know what I mean? It's just it's too bad like that stuff gets like jacked up for for limited releases or super allocated stuff. But this is like when you spend seventy dollars on a bourbon, this is a level of quality that I think you relatively like should be expecting, even if it is not your cup of chew or tea or, or bourbon or whatever. Yeah, no, it's the same price as the maker's expressions that we talked mm -hmm. about. It's it's slightly higher than the maker's cask stuff, the maker's 46 cask and things like that. So um, no, I, I think it's a fair price. I like that they don't jack it way, way up. And so bringing our total scores, we got there. Now we did get there the different ways this time. To, we both gave it a 6.5. Hey, so, all um, right. 6.5 out of 10. That's really not bad. We've talked about like the variance on our show is really between – 7.2 to six. So that's really where the, you know, I'd like to, you know, come up with a graph real quick and um, mm -hmm. plot all this out. Joe asked me for the, the numbers like a week and a half ago when we were in Charlotte and I said, yes. And then I got drunk and didn't do it, but uh, sorry, Joe. Um, I've sent them to you by the time you're hearing this though. 
But um, yeah, so so 6.5 is pretty good. Like, it's pretty yeah. middle of the road, really, when you think about it. We we rate things between a 6 and a 7 mm-hmm. most of the time. There are some exceptions that have gone lower. There are some exceptions that have gone higher. But most things fall between that 6 and 7. So 6.5 is kind of middle of the road for our rankings, mm-hmm. but it's above average overall. Yeah, initially, we like when I first came up with the system, I, in my mind, I thought like 5 would be like what middle meant. But I, I think in general, like – most of the time, like uh, if you can drink something and it's palatable, it's going to end up getting above a five in our ranking system. If you go below five, it means it's swill pretty much. It means like that's a drain pour or something that you're trying to blend to save or like given to other people or whatever. Um, so yeah, usually if it's above a six, that's a level of like competency. 6.5 probably gets us into it being pretty good. Seven is where you start getting into like special special yeah. with with the value in mind yeah. uh, and only we, one thing has ever been above at an eight before for us and yeah smoke wagon we very rarely rate things below you know like the absolute floor is like three right like we will never we've never rated something a two because everything has some kind of value right? like so everything has a good like you could do right yeah you could do day. like regular gym beam and you'd say like oh the nose is a 0.25 you'd give everything a 0.25 and you'd end up with a you know uh something above a three, I would assume, right? Like maybe we should do regular gym beam soon just to kind of like test Ooh, theory. Sure. But um, yeah, no, I like this. So, okay, this review has been a little bit long. The first show on Tuesday was a little bit short. So you're getting a little bit longer of a review because it was just me and Brendan. We have something else to put up against this FAE real quick. We're not doing a whole other review. Don't tune out, but just a real quick battle mm-hmm. with, thanks to Lukens in Tampa, the cannoli. The cannoli I got from them. I sent this to Joe. Joe's Italian, much like my co-host over here to the, uh, well, if you're watching this, the right, if you're watching it, it's actually, well, it's my right too because it mirrors it. So anyway, cannoli, yeah, I don't know. I, bro, I've had a whole just, FAE here. No, 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 just keep, just keep Cannoli is a pick that I believe Lukens and Davidoff did here in Tampa, but I got mine from Lukens. Um, 02431. So zero baked American pure, two seared French cuvee, four Maker's Mark 46, three roasted French mocha, and one toasted French spice. Okay, so pretty balanced. Certainly more so compared to the uh, to the 10 French oak staves of the FAEO one, right? Certainly. Yeah. So immediately on the nose, much sweeter. Mm-hmm. Like just absolute. I mean, it's, you know, it's not Candy. supposed to taste like a cannoli, but – it's kind of what you may get some some different things on. You may get some of the chocolate. You may get some of the cream. Sweet the cream French. for sure yeah. for me is what Sweet cream, a tiny bit of chocolate, right? There's not a ton of chocolate in a cannoli. Um, some of the breadiness, that's the makers we did. Thus, you have a cannoli. You know, fruity uh, as well to me. A little fruitier, like what you know isn't part of a cannoli typically, but like kind of just like a, like a jammy, sweet quality for me. It's nice. It's a really pleasant, really sweet nose. I like it. Um. Have you been up to uh, Boston College to cover FSU yet or no? I have. You're going to tell me about Mike's. Uh... Well, Mike's is good, but there's also a, like a million up and down that strip that like uh, places that you can go in and get awesome. I mean, Mike's is fantastic. You know, like it is totally worth the hype. It's totally worth the line. It's totally worth being cash only. But we had some fantastic cannolis there. But not only Mike's, the other couple of nights that we went to the North End, the Italian side of places there's a place called mother anna's that's amazing up there i don't know if you i don't know if you're going back to boston or not but fantastic oh i'm going i'm taking my mom and we're going to connecticut to do the new haven pizza or as well uh covid covid pending uh maybe dave portnoy will want to come and join us oh maybe he he listens so my mom um, watches them now and she'll be like oh the undercarriage on this pizza i'm like oh mom (laughs) (laughs) but anyway mother anna's right across the street from from uh mike's pastries um at literally every bite of of pasta we had that night we karen and i were just looking at each other like oh my gosh so like i cannot like every bite cannot believe this cannot believe but in the italian district so this is mike's pastries in a glass right here um Ooh, what do nose, you think the nose on the cannoli to me is superior to the nose on the fae the flavor i mean the fae was so strong that it's really hard to drink this after it and pull out a ton other than it just being kind of a sweet profile get. sweetness yeah yeah um man the nose on this is really 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 pleasant uh the taste i'm trying to get into a little bit more stall for me here dj because i'm trying to see if i could pick up one or two things but that that leather oak bomb uh tobacco bomb 
kind of kind of nukes my palate. Yeah, no. I mean, I do get some of that sweet, like bread. you said on the nose, some of that bread. bready, mm -hmm. a little bit of the cream. I, I believe that comes, I don't know where they get that from. Maybe the toasted French spice. I'm not sure exactly where that comes from, but you get some of those spices in it. I, I agree. The palate is absolutely nuked after having the FAE. The cannoli is much sweeter, something that we probably will do a review on eventually. I mean, we have plenty of it left, and I think you even saved some as well. Mm -hmm. But it's tough to really talk about it after that FAE. Do you have one that if you drink them next to each other? I, I mean, I, in times past, have drank them and liked the cannoli more. It's more mm -hmm. my profile. It's the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, this is one that will be very challenging to get if you're not here in Tampa because – it didn't get anywhere else. If somebody wants a sample of it, feel free to slide in in my DMs and uh, or the Bourbon on a Budget DMs. We'll uh, we'll respond. Yeah, let's do it in the Bourbon on a Budget DMs. If you if you slide in those, uh, we'll uh, we'll send you uh, we'll send you one. So real yeah. quick, that, that account was turned into to you running it and trolling me, pretty much. Um, What's wrong I'm, with that? I'm okay with it. I'm just pointing it out. Don't you want to get more followers? It hurts my feelings. And we I gotta follow. It. As soon as That's I sent that troll, we got a follow from a guy named Damon, that, and I and just immediately we were good to go. So I, that kind of clout is what I'm here <laughs> for. Is you can dump on me and get followers. You're welcome. Um, no, this shows TJ. I will say this real quick before we wrap up here. Uh, how that the wood finishing profile and experiment that. Maker's Mark has really embarked on the last few years. What it does to a bourbon, it's really cool how much of a variation it has with with just slight finishing nothing. it. Just yeah. the, just the staves, just the yep. yeah. No, it's fantastic. It's so okay. both are. I'm getting more. I'm getting. I'm getting more out of this. Ooh. I got it. Okay, so not a ton, but I am getting a little bit of chocolate now. Like on the very back end of this, I'm getting a little bit of chocolate. I am too yep. on the finish and and kind of. Uh, I hate that I'm going to be so cliche with this, but kind of like a cannoli, it comes at the finish, right? Like you taste the cream and the uh, bread and everything with it. It really is. I read the mocha again. I was like, oh, there is a little bit of chocolate in there. But they have three mocha um, staves, right? So, I mean, that's that's what you're supposed to get is is a little bit of a finish of that. A little bit, um, of, a little bit of milk chocolate for sure. Some um, breadiness. Obviously, there's four of the regular Maker's Mark 46 that that they use in a lot of things. So, we, we've described that before as pancakey, syrupy. So, sweet bread mm -hmm. is, is certainly there as well. Um, the cream is something that I got more on the nose than the taste. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, I think so. Let's toast it up. Um so just add a little bit of that. What I what okay, question here and then we'll go because this has been 33 minutes. We're usually a little bit shorter than longest this. review ever without Ben. See, Ben keeps us on track. Well, we also gave him a shorter show on Tuesday. Yeah, so that's true. they they were the people were crying out for more content, mm -hmm. though we recorded this before they ever heard that one. Um, what if you to tell this is what I've heard that different stores have done? They've ordered full bottles or full full samples of all five stave profiles and mix them themselves. I mean, that that's not a sense. bad idea. So you, so you that's an easier of, way to do it than yeah. having to say, okay, give me one, two, three, four, six, or right. give me one, three, two, zero, five, you mm -hmm. know, order a hundred percent and just do their own blending project. By doing percentages, take an ounce of this, take an ounce of this, take an ounce of this. You got five ounces, mix it, like. yeah. and roll. Yeah. Interesting little concept there. Uh, it makes sense. Um, I would like to, I mean, that would be a ton of fun. That would be a ton of fun to do. Um, the Maker's Mark is doing really cool stuff, man. I mean, they, they just, they open up those, these cool concepts. Hey, hey, Kara, I know you just got home with the kids. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I love it. Right. Every, everyone's getting home right now. My one year old's like waving at me like this, you know, as you we shut, you shut your mouth, baby Bryant. You shut your mouth. <laughs> Sorry, I say, was that a little too aggressive to your family? Uh, that's My what bad. I say most days. So uh, also RIP Ben still. He's not Catholic, but it's all good. I mean, you know, I, but that would be fun to do. That would be a ton of fun. I mean, I'm leaving all that in, so I don't care. That would be a ton of fun to kind of like undertake that project. Like that'd be such a good way to do it um, where you kind of make the stuff yourself mm -hmm. as opposed to requesting like, oh, can I taste what this would be like? Can I taste mm -hmm. what that? And maybe that's the way Makers does it anyway. Maybe that's just – maybe they don't send you 
you know, every sample you want. Maybe they just say like, oh yeah, mix it yourself and see what you want. But that's it. That's that'd be the like efficient way four, to do right? it. Right. Yeah, and and the more fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Like if you're like a a, a liquor distributor that really like Lucan's, like you tell they put like in gas bars. Like there's different like by you guys, you could tell people really enjoy the process of of store picks and tasting and and guess I know like the the uh, Southwest Florida like Bourbon Society similar like they really enjoy the the testing process and trying all these different things. Um, I would love to be involved in that. Uh, yeah, but makers makers would be a great place to start because they give you so many different options. My friend um, Susie over at Lukens, um, every time that they do a new barrel tasting, she's always posting on her Instagram, and it's a big to do, and there's usually food involved, and it, they treat it like a party, and so I respond every time like how do i get into this and she, she leaves me on red so um oh, anyway oh, oh. <laughs> so that's my hint but uh no all right ton of fun really good mm -hmm. episode um sorry that we went a little long but again you guys got a shorter show on tuesday so thanks for hanging out um it's bourbon on a budget everywhere um twitter instagram tiktok youtube facebook itunes spotify soundcloud stitcher all the places um check us out we appreciate you guys support Feel better, Ben. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers. All right, you guys.